You know, you keep bringing up Dick Purton, so let me tell you the Dick Purton story. Yes. Um, you know, we after we did the Robin Seymour documentary, it was on PBS, and I was in Arizona, and it's 11 o'clock at night, and I get a phone call. I'm sitting down for a late, late dinner with my wife, and I look at my phone, and it's Dick Purton. I said, well, i got to take this. So he calls me up to say, I know you had a lot to do with this Robin documentary. It was just spectacular. It was so well done. It was so well produced. I didn't produce it, um, but a guy named uh, um, Bill, it'll come to me, uh, did a great job producing it, and it was well received, right? So when I get back to Detroit, Steve Schramm and I are sitting around talking, and I and we both came to what's next. Well, there's two things on my mind. One is a documentary about Keener 13, and the other was a documentary about Dick Purton. And Steve and I both agreed that Dick Purton is somebody who should be, you know, there should be some sort of a tribute to him. And and while we have him, and he's so funny, and he's still so sharp and so witty. And so we thought, okay, he's very humble. Yes, he and is. He's, he's probably not going to want to do this, but we're going to, we would do it in such a respectful way. And because he loved the Robin documentary and he loved how that was produced, my pledge was we were going to hire the same producer and do it the same way. So I said, uh, let me, do you mind if I pursue this? And Steve said, no, go ahead. I already talked to the folks at Channel 56. They were on board. And uh, so I ha I'm friends with Al Muscovitz, you know, Big Al, who was a big part of Dick Burton's radio yes. program for years. So I called Al one day, and I said, Al, I just want to tell you, because I'm thinking about how to approach this, and I'm thinking maybe you're the guy, because he has such respect and trust in you. We want to do a documentary. We want, want to do the history of Dick Purton. Uh, we want it to be something that he is comfortable with and that he'll have, um, he'll have uh, um, ownership of, and we're not going to do anything to embarrass him or anything that he wouldn't want. And what are your thoughts? He says, I think it's a great idea. He says, do you mind if I just you know, bring him in on it and see how he feels? And I said, yes. Tell him that. Bill Cadoba is going to be the producer, and that I'm going to be involved, Steve Schramm's going to be involved, the same team of people that put the Robin Seymour documentary that he loves so much. And uh, a few days later, Al calls me and says, Dick's on board. He just wants to make sure that, you know, we do this tastefully, you know, there's nothing, you know, whatever. I can't imagine what we would find about sure. Dick Curtin that was not tasteful, right? Right. So we ended up putting this thing together, and what a joy that was. It, see, it turned out great. I mean, you guys it, did amazing. It was fantastic. Probably one of my favorite was, local documentaries. And, you know, it's been rerun about seven or eight times. And, you know, it's a great fundraiser for PBS, which is, you know, part of what they do and need to do. Uh, but it tells such a great story about Detroit Broadcasting and about Dick Burton. And I love making fun of the fact that he couldn't keep a job. You know, I start out by saying it. This guy, he was at Keener, he was at CKLW, he XYZ, was at KQI, yeah. he was at XYZ. Yeah. Was at, you know, the guy can't keep a job. <laughs> So, but anyway. Here's what you need to know about Dick Purton. He was, first off, he was kind enough, you know, I've done interviews for this docuseries in many different places. He invited me into his home. He had just yeah. got remarried. It was just past COVID. And, uh, and yes, yeah. very lovely She's lady. And, sweetheart. And uh, that story was phenomenal in itself. Oh, yeah. Because uh, his kids kind of pushed kids him. Embraced, the kids embraced her. I mean, you know, a lot of times it doesn't go that way. Right. But this is so good. It's so great. They're a wonderful couple. We've been out with them socially. She's a wonderful addition to the to the Purton family. Two things struck and, me about my time sitting down with Dick for this docuseries. First, he's known for his career in Detroit. You mentioned XYZ, CKLW, Keener, CZY, and then finishing yeah. his career at OMC. <laughs> uh, but... Most two of the biggest things that in his career happened before he came to Detroit when he was in Cincinnati, he yeah. brought the Beatles to town. Right. I mean, he financed right. that, he produced it, he brought the Beatles to Cincinnati. And then another thing he did was he interviewed JFK when he was running for president against Nixon. That's a great right. story. 
Yeah, and, and the no, second no, no. thing, and probably the most endearing to me, was after the interview, Michael, he invited me to come downstairs to see his trophy room, all right? <laughs> now I expected to see all this hardware. Now, don't get me wrong. I, he had some stuff from his induction into the National Hall of, National Radio Hall of Fame. He had a picture yeah. of John Candy. But everything else, Michael, was his family, his grandkids, yeah. his daughters. Yeah. And that's all you need to know about Dick Burton. That's, he wasn't and about... That is all you need to know, yeah. And he was just and, great. And, and that's why there was concern and trepidation because he's a humble guy. Yeah. And uh, to this day, and he's very thankful and appreciative of how that whole documentary came together. We were all there live in the studio that night. And of course, you know, he was nervous, uh, but we did those live cutaways. You know, we each had a few yeah. things that we wanted to say. And, but it, it, was, it was a well-produced uh, documentary. It's been well-received by the public. And I'm just proud to have been a part of it. Well, I want to ask you, because as someone who produced it, when you sat down, did you get to see it before it was aired? I, I did get to see it. Tell me what was, was going through your head when you said, were you pleased? Were you like, oh, this is going to be awesome? I was tickled because I knew the producer who had done such an artful job on the, on the Robin Seymour documentary, weaving in all of the stories, weaving in the music and the, it, 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 the editing was just spectacular, and I, I had great confidence that it was going to be similar. We had so much material, yeah, and there was so much left out because yeah. you've only got an hour or whatever. I don't know. Well, wow, your, your, what was left out, Big Al was able to get me some content that I can put in mind, so I'm looking forward. In fact, I'll make a <laughs> okay. point. I'll send you the link because I'd like you to oh. see it, get your feedback of what I got. Yeah, but yeah. A real sure. quick, before we move on Dick from Dick Purton, when I was interviewing him, he told me this great story because I was asking him about Ernie Harwell, and mm -hmm. he was raving about Ernie Harwell. He tells this great story. He does his imitation of Ernie. I'm not going to try to do it, but he, he, called, uh, mm -hmm. he called Ernie one night, and he said, I'm not, hope I'm not bothering you. And, and he was in his imitation of Ernie. He goes, "No, I'm just sitting here with Lulu watching Fargo for the five thousandth time," <laughs> and it was just like, "Oh, that's great." But he thought so much of, of 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 others, and he wasn't one to draw to his. He liked doing what he did, but he liked that everybody was getting attention, and it wasn't just focused on him. 